This is Deep Blue, where we get the true life stories of BYU athletes, coaches, and fans. Here's your host, Jerem Jordan. On today's show, I talk with perhaps the power couple at BYU. He's the men's basketball coach with the infectious, contagious personality and a winning way. She's creative and caring, the former ESPN employee, personal assistant of David Letterman. They are the parents of four daughters, Mark and Leanne Pope are in studio. Guys, welcome to the show. Thanks for having us, Good Gerald. intro. Let's yeah. run that back. <laughs> now, I was just going to interview Leanne, you know, and she's like, hey, Mark's got to be on it too, I guess. And I was like, okay, fine. We're a package deal. Fine. Um, I, that's how it always works. So it's so funny because that is, like, as soon as people meet our family, it's like, Leanne is the show, I'm the pickle. <laughs> I can say that. <laughs> I love it because honestly, I had heard of you. Yeah. I was like, "Oh, David Letterman's yeah, assistant yeah. was uh, a member of the church." Like I had heard yeah, of you. I didn't yeah. know who you were or whatever. And then Mark, when I was little, you were the Mormon dude on Kentucky. Yep, that's what I knew of you. Now I feel like you're close personal friends from the last three years uh, with men's basketball, which has been a really fun journey up to this point. Yeah, and we've spent a lot. I mean, the three of us spent a lot of time together. I mean, you've been such a great friend to us and obviously stirring us through this media side of Coach's show and, and all the game media stuff. And you're, you got you and Spencer just killing it here. And so we're super grateful to be here, man. Yeah, super excited. Okay, well, let's, let's start with you, Luanne. Where are you from? I know your dad, Lynn Archibald, longtime basketball coach, Utah, BYU. Mm-hmm. What's what's your journey been like? Where are you from, and how did your kind of upbringing uh, form you? So my dad was a Division One coach, right? So I was born uh, when he was at UNLV with with Jerry. He actually went to UNLV when it, when they went to UNLV. It was Nevada Western. They actually changed it like when they went to UNLV. So I was born there. Then he USC. He was head coach at Idaho State. Yeah, but could we pause? You are a product of the Jerry Tarkanian yes. Vegas regime. How about that? That says a lot. Like that biting, a lot. Like biting towels as a yeah. kid and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but he did. So when we were at Idaho State, my dad was head coach there, and we got a call from the airport that said, who doesn't like you in Las Vegas? And my dad's like, what? He sent us, Jerry sent us a, a German shepherd without permission said, every kid needs a dog. And so we had a German shepherd. His, his, his German shepherd had pups. He sent it out to us. We named it Tark. That's and great. And actually, Tark coincidentally passed the year Jerry retired. <gasps> How is that? What in just, the world? I'm just saying. Like he, Our only He's, dog was Tark. I didn't know. And Jerry sent it to us. When is this? 80s? No, 90, 90s. 90s. Yeah, I was going to say, how do you like send... Like 92, 93. I was going to say, in the 80s, how do you send a German Shepherd in the yeah. mail? Yeah, you no, did. No. You did. <laughs> but great. It was but great. But the 90s. Okay. My mom was not happy. The yeah. legendary stories about Tark, the, the coach, and the friend, and the, like, confidant, and then Tark, the dog, they're endless. Yeah. <laughs> like, you got you yeah. to tell the story about your dad with Tark. He would sick Tark on many a male I'm a de- people. Let me tell a story. Let me tell a story. I'm a male, male, male woman. <laughs> so listen, so this is, this is one of my favorite <laughs> stories about the great Lynn Archibald, okay? So what was the kid's name? Scott Hadley. Scott Hadley. Scott, I'm sorry, man. I'm throwing you under the bus right now. So Leanne and I are at our wedding. We, we didn't know each other's camps very well. We live in, in different uh, parts of the country and as we'll we dive into the that. whole time. Yeah. Yeah. So we have a dinner the night before, or what do you call it? The night before yeah. our wedding, whatever yeah. it was. Yeah. And so we have all these people there. And this guy, this guy like my age, comes up to me. I've never met him before. He's like, he's like, hey, Mark, congratulations. So excited. No, Leanne, she's the greatest person I've ever met in my life. And I have a story to tell you. And he was so a childhood friend all through my years at Bountiful. So Scott Hadley is, uh, is 12, 13? Yeah, he was junior high. So I'm he comes 13. to the house. And, you know, legendary Coach Archibald, right? So he knocks on the door. And Coach Arch answers the door. And Scott has recently got a haircut. He's got a mohawk, Right. And so he knocks, the whole football team got Mohawks yeah, for naturally. whatever. So he knocks on the door and he's like, "Hey, coach. Hey, uh, is Leanne here? I'd like to see her." And coach takes one look at her, him. leaves at him, t- leaves the front door open, walks straight back to the back house. You can see the thing the whole way. And Scott's telling me the story, and he slides open the back door. So this all takes place in four or five seconds. He still hasn't said a word to Scott Hadley, and he just yells from the backyard. He's like, "Get him, Tark!" And Scott, all Scott hears. Is Tark's like paws <laughs> scraping against the, the pavement? He's trying to run from the backyard through the house. He took off running, like terrified. And I was like, this is it. Come on, man. And my dad shut the door, dead serious, no apologies. 
and we moved on with it. That's how he rolled. Yeah, yeah. That's like that's Tark the dog, Coach Arch, <laughs> and I was and his Jerry only Tark daughter. Hitting, that's all great. Put he did not play. He did not play. How was your dad? Like, how was his personality? Oh, he's he he, is, he was the best. Just he loved people, kind, um, lighthearted, really really patient. And I, I just unless I think they had that, a mohawk. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, and like, <laughs> you saw a different side of my father when it came to me, and you see mm. a different side of Mark Pope when it comes to his daughters. Interesting. It's like there is there you is that same there thing? is a different level gotcha. of like there's like I will hurt you, and then I was like I will kill. You. Like it is it is uncomfortable. It is uncomfortable, and I grew up with it, and, it, and I think it it makes you feel protected. I think it's important for girls to feel like their dads got them, and like you don't want to mess with me because you don't want to mess with that what what, what I have at home, my brothers, my and, and my I dog. think the team is sometimes yeah. an extension of that. Mm. So, um, yeah. So you yeah. Th- from a distance, like seeing Leanne and Lynn's relationship, which I actually never saw in living color because I didn't know Leanne until Lynn had passed away. But I get to meet all these guys. Mm. It's so funny. This coaching world is so small. And so it's every single basketball event we're at, somebody is going to come up to me and talk about Coach Archibald. And when they, they, they always say, man, he loved Leanne. Sunshine mm. was his nickname for her. Mm. He just, it comes up literally. I mean, every week someone comes up. He loved his daughter so much. Um, it's super incredible relationship. Trent, Trent Johnson, you know, longtime it's great. coach. It's great. Through coached everywhere he would talk about how my dad would be one tone at practice and he was like i could always tell when sunshine came into the gym because my dad's tone changed just a little bit Mm. just a little bit he really did love you then yeah yeah yeah, i was was his only girl i was just sunshine does that happen with you mark if one of your daughters shows up does Uh, something change or are you like i'm gonna do this then that we we, we're also these are also daughters raised by a coach's daughter so we stand back we you we, know we, they we, know yeah, when to insert themselves they, yes. yes yep and we yeah kind of stay in the high. upper bowl yeah. Yeah. i'm actually so the thing is for me is like my daughters and leanne are way tougher on me than they could ever hear me being on the guys sometimes i, I kid you not sometimes things don't go perfectly smoothly in a game and I'll roll in back in the house at 1 o'clock in the morning, and all five girls are sitting around the table just waiting to just come <laughs> crush me when I walk in the door. It's merciless. I love it. And I don't know that we That's know great. that you think you did anything wrong, but we do like an explanation sometimes. Yes. So yes. why like, didn't? We want to be heard yeah. <laughs> about the game. <laughs> so why didn't? Why did you take him out at that point? Oh, oh. You're like, oh, okay. You're like, okay. I already did post game. <laughs> I already talked to Greg and Mark. Well, that's easy. But that's easy. Compared to walking yeah. into the house. That's funny. Okay, so how many siblings do you have? So I have two brothers, an older brother, two brothers. Damon, okay, you're the one young, daughter. Yep, and you get, younger brother. You get Bo. all the daughters love. Yes, totally. And, awesome. I, and I loved being an only girl. Loved it. Didn't even. In fact, I never even thought about sisters until I think I was had my a family of my own. Mm. And I thought it'd really be kind of fun to have a sister that was kind of doing the same thing. That yeah. was the first time it ever dawned. I mean, my my dad, my mom, my I felt like such a privilege to be the only Archibald girl. So I and I had stitches and black eyes and the whole thing. I mean, it was mm. like my brothers were. Gotcha. I, I I wanted to be a part of the gang and. There was a price that was paid for that. <laughs> Did you play basketball? No, played volleyball. You played, played volleyball. I, mean, I played everything growing yeah. up, and then when I got to high school, I played. I played volleyball. State um, champion volleyball player, setter on one of the most epic volleyball teams in the history of Arizona volleyball. At the time, we were the only undefeated team that had yeah. ever. Yeah, at the time, I think that's changed. What high school? Then. Corona del Sol. Corona del uh, Sol. Alma mater of, of uh, Alex Barcelona. I was going to say. That was yeah. a huge part of the recruiting deal. But I can't does, tell you. Like, when does, Alex finally met Leanne and they had the Corona connection, yes, it was Yes, but over. Alex does not know the Corona fight song. That's an issue. <laughs> That's an issue. No, it's just it can like be overcome. About, yeah, it, it easily overcome. So you were, was a uh, college setting a possibility for you? Did you think about it? Did you yeah. want to do it? Yep. Yeah, I had I had some I had I, it wasn't what I wanted. Mm. And, it, and it's actually something I talk a lot about with my girls that I don't talk a lot about, but I did have some opportunities to play at smaller schools. I had some walk-on opportunities at some bigger schools. And I actually looked at volleyball, and I loved it, and I was super competitive. I did not love volleyball like my brothers and my dad loved volleyball. I mean, my brothers used to shovel oh, the driveway. Oh, they love volleyball, too. Basketball. I mean, basketball. Oh, sorry, basketball. I'm basketball. so sorry. I'm oh. so sorry. They would shovel the driveway yeah, to be able yeah. to shoot. They were, and I, I did not love it that way. And when I, I used to walk up to the, my dad's office at Arizona State, and I would see the volleyball team or the, like lifting and I was like yeah I do not <laughs> that is lifting like, I love volleyball I love competing I I you know but I was like I, I don't want to do that 
And, and it was actually a, a sweet journey as my dad helped me navigate that because you feel a pressure, you feel there's an opportunity, you feel like you should take it. And he would say, Sunshine, the, the biggest decisions sometimes, most times are kind of made for us. And it was like, mm. Weber State called and said, hey, we've got someone that's going to commit. If you're, and we, I wasn't ready to commit. And so it kind of made it, he was right. It kind of evolved into something. Super fun I've though, never regretted it. is that we've gone through each of the daughter, each of the girls, mm-hmm. and they're all really active athletically, basketball, uh, tennis, dance. And then our youngest daughter now is settled in where she is actually loving volleyball. So Leanne gets to coach her a little bit. It's really yeah. good. Are you, are you living through no, that a little no, bit not again? At all. No, not at all. I, no. I've given all my girls the speech. Like, you do this because you want it and you love it because it's not my dream. It's your dream. Yeah. And I, that is not confusing for me at all. Like, I just am like, it is their thing. And I will support and gotcha. help. But as far as, like, no, there's no living through, like, Shay. Like, she loves it. It's awesome. She's good, It's too. fun. But it is fun, like, to, like, when I, when, with Avery with tennis, we were both just like, this is awesome. She hits the ball so hard. Like, we had no idea. Right? Multi-state champ. <laughs> right. We were yeah, right, right. right now. Coach is on the side of the tennis court and be like, hit it, Avery, hit it. <laughs> that we was our no guidance. Idea. Yeah. It's like, I always think, is there a NASCAR coach? <laughs> yeah. <exactly. laughs> like, like, right. Drive past there. Like, what, take a pit stop. Like, like that's clear, crazy. clearly Mark had insight to help, you know, with Ella. There were things that he could help her with. Tennis, we were both blind. Yeah. But I guess there's a little bit of. Yeah, we fun both in have that. A, a significant background in dance, so we're helping Layla a lot yeah. with that. <laughs> no, Layla, we're, we're all. We're, she's got five people like, that's amazing. You guys are like, it is. No, no, yeah. no, we were just like, it's like she moves and she does things, and we're just like, none of us can do any of that. Okay, you, awesome. you've said some of your daughters' names. T- oh, yes. Tell me again, and then kind of what this thing is, right? Yeah. Ella is the oldest. Yep. Yeah. Sorry. Ohio women's Yep, yep. She just returned from her mission, and she's featured in general conference (laughs) talking about her decision to go on a mission, which is so cool. Too was so awesome, so fun. So she's a freshman at Ohio. She's doing great. She's back from the mission. Yep, yep. I can't believe she's back already. I know. know. She She came back in April, and then she went back out to Ohio at the end of June. She came home for a quick week in August, but she is fully immersed and wants to study nursing and and really loves school and is doing really well. Why Ohio for her? It was the coaching staff mm. and Coach Bolden. Coach Bolden came and saw her more than even some of the local coaches that are just from Ohio. Yeah, mm-hmm. from to Utah. Ohio. And he, the connection they had, and he, she's a coach's daughter. The connection with the head coach is real. And in fact, he came out and saw her. And, and he was uh, cool with the mission idea, or did that come later? Absolutely. Yeah, she was playing on a Nike Elite team out of Colorado, and it was one of the first conversations. Wow. And he had been. He has been. And continues to be super supportive. And he was he was and super open when he first we first started talking. He's like, I don't know anything about Mormons, no. so you're gonna have to teach me. You guys are yeah. like, well, we have a lot to say. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Here's a book. Exactly. <laughs> Read this first. Here we go. 531 pages. <laughs> yeah. But he, there's been a couple of times that he's kind of said, Hey, I, I'm going to kind of ask for some guidance on you know getting her back from mission, getting her body ready, like things like that. I mean, he's the it's boss. Totally different for right. him, Never had right? It, this, right. Yeah. And on our, our our visit, I really said, I'm like, so you all, y'all have never met anyone from the church, a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and there was a zero. Everyone at that table, all four coaches, GA, wow. and one of the players, her best friend in high school was was a member of the church, and so Ella's had a lot of really what an opportunity. amazing opportunities. Yeah, yeah. really. And, and, and it's been wonderful for her to forge real relationships with people that don't see the world she, the way that she does, which we think is super important. I mean, it's we don't really see the world, not member, member. It's, these are people. And for her to, like, really forge these great relationships, it, it will bless her life That's forever. Cool. And okay. then Avery's our next. Yep. She's two years younger, and she's a freshman here at BYU playing tennis. She's a tennis star, Yeah, she, right? she, she is working hard. Did she win multiple she's state really, championships? Did I yeah. have that correctly? No, so her, she, she would tell you. So she lost in the state championship her sophomore year in the final match. As a sophomore? Yep. Yes. In third wow. singles. Te- but her team won it. Three years in a Team row. Team one. She and lost in the few. state yes, championship she was legit. Yeah. her junior year in second singles in the final match. Mm. And her senior year, state championship, final match, lost in first singles. So she's she's carrying that around, but she's super hungry, and she loves it so much. It's amazing. And she's really good. To like, get to that point. Yeah, and it's yeah. so fun. It's, it's so fun as a dad, too, to step on the court and be like, the ball's coming so fast. Like, you can't even. It's, she's good. It's really fun. And, and she's, Would she waste both of you in tennis? Yes. Oh, my gosh. Like it's, At what it's, age? It's yes. embarrassing. What age did you? Yeah, she yeah, yeah. destroy her. Yes. <laughs> you take a jab. I just meant like. Jab, yeah. you're going down, too. We're all going down. <laughs> yes, absolutely. How old was she when you were like, oh, she would beat us? Uh, well, skill-wise, um, she w- she passed us like 10 years ago. 
But Mark could hang. Like, they used to but go early in the morning. my mental game was so on point, I could get in her head. Yes. That doesn't work anymore. <laughs> that does not work anymore. I mean, I would say in high school, he could still he would still walk through the door down. at 630. He's like, I'm an undefeated. <laughs> okay, so she's on the team. <laughs> she is. That's she's exciting. Yeah. Okay. And Mark's like, it's the, I mean, she comes she comes to the annex. You get ice and a granola bar. I mean, Mark's like, it's we the, were at the We awesome. were at the third floor of the, of the SAB yesterday with a coach's meeting, uh, all athletic department coaches meeting, and I walk out, and boom. Avery is standing right there in the hall because she's uh, studying in the in the academic center, which is just connected essentially. You're like, good, you're actually here. Yeah. Little <laughs> little moments like that are, are just it's priceless. So right? It's so fun. You know, I, and, and Ella wanted to go, and she wanted that experience, and she and, and that's wonderful. And and how it evolved with Avery that she's here. I'm like, oh, this is kind of nice too. <laughs> okay, tell me this. So I'm trying to teach my kids. I have an eight year old daughter and a three year old son. I keep telling my eight year old daughter, you need to learn how to lose. Mm. You need to learn how to lose. You're gonna lose a lot. Like when you win, it's awesome, but you gotta learn to be a good sport. You gotta learn to be motivated to do better. Avery's experience could be really bitter, right? Yep. Oh man, I never won. Ah, I hate tennis. Like yep. that could happen easily. Yep. Has she learned how to lose? And how have you, as a coach, and and Juliana's former player and and coach as the mom, how have you taught her how to lose? Like I'm trying to teach my kid how to lose. I don't yeah. I don't know how to do it. So one of the monsters on our team that the guys will talk about is turning frustration in a fight. And then mm. this question, this great question about how do you respond? Yes. The game is all we've talked about this, Jaron. The game always at once ask you one question, whether it's tennis or basketball or life. It just wants, it doesn't care what just happened. It doesn't care what's going to happen in the future. It cares how are you going to respond right now. And so one of the things about Avery is, is she is she has kind of fought her way through a ton of tears. Am I allowed to say that? Like she's had matches where she comes home just broken and in tears and just found a way to like pick herself up the next day and be like, hey, I know what I need to do. I need to go work harder. And then the beauty of that is that she has actually seen herself improve and overcome with like the constant everyday 1% of work. I mean, how great was General Conference, right? Yep. Talking about line upon line and 1% and the whole deal. And she, she's kind of learned that where she's just like, hey, th- this one match is never the end. It's just about growing. She's, she's, she's actually teaching us uh, a lot of things. She's, she's incredible. And I would say, too, which is something Mark talks about publicly and privately, is getting better every day. Mm-hmm. And that is something that I have, he has talked about. It's so easy to get distracted by something doesn't go well, or a player said this, or coach didn't show me this, or I didn't. And, and it takes all the control out of the, from the athlete. And Mark will like, put your energy into what you can control. Yes. And that is getting better every day. And Avery, I feel like, specifically, has been an example of her just being like, I'm not. People saying she started too late. People saying that, I mean, whatever the distractions or the naysayers or the fanatical tennis families, which, wonderful, but that are just like, you know, age two, you're too late, you're never going. I, it, she didn't get distracted. And and, and Ella, too. And it, it, so that yeah. is, I would say that is the thing that I hear Mark on the phone. Get better every day. Your goal is to be the best tennis player you can be. Not to be first singles, second singles, third singles, and that and that as a young parent is they can control that. They yes. can control how hard they work. They yes. can control how the effort and trying to get better. You know, I, I just think, you know, in the process and enjoying progress, like that whole pro, that whole package. I feel like is preached at our house, and I believe and I believe in it. And when the when the when the when you say learning how to lose, I know exactly what you're saying, and the effort. And all of that, they have control over all those things. You know, yes. I, I, a young parent, someone said, don't ask somebody how many goals they scored. You ask them, did you have fun? Did you work hard? Yes. And that was something at a, actually at a Nuggets mm-hmm. event yep. when our kids That's were right. younger. And, I, and it was a, a, a pediatric psychologist or whatever. And I thought, you're right. Because mm-hmm. when you ask a child, did they win or lose? Or how many goals did they score? They don't always have control over that. And it's, it's yeah, but, but you don't. did you have fun? Did you work hard? Yes. Everyone's skill level is different. Everyone's abilities physically, mentally, emotionally mm-hmm. are different, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I was reminded of, you know, Joseph Smith and Liberty Jail. Let us do cheerfully all things that lie within our power. Yeah. Don't worry about what you can't control. Yes. Right? I love what you said, enjoying progress. Because yeah. progress is painful. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, and it's not all, it, the, the, the joy in the journey thing yeah. needs mm-hmm. to happen. It's not like, I'm hiking so I can get to the top. Yep. And, like, and, well, and, sometimes you don't get no, to the top. Right, right. I'll tell you something and, interesting. Is like, is, it, with Ella and Avery, I mean, we're just start speaking about athletics because we live somewhat in an athletic It's world, the vehicle right? that we see the world in, right? But with both those girls, if you talk to them right now, they'd say, we just were always behind. We started late. 
partly because Leanne and I were were a little bit hands off with all we of were. their. They ex, had to find you know, what they loved, and so you know Ella was always kind of a little uh, behind trying to make the next best team and trying to work her way up, and Avery was a little behind. But what you saw with both those girls was that they would kind of hang in there through the tears and then they would keep fighting and grow and then actually win huge. And the internal like joy that they had and the pride in knowing they're the only ones that really know the emotional and physical journey they took. And so when they can look inward and be so proud of having overcome something or accomplished something they didn't know they could, as a parent, you just like those are the moments you crave because then it's something inside them where they almost it feeds on itself. And they're like, I want to try and do that again. Like I'm almost I'm not going to be so scared of failing the next time because I'm so inspired and exciting about when I can overcome that failure through work. It is awesome to watch your kids do that. It's just incredible. And I think something that Mark has always talked to our girls about. And of course, it's also how we make a living. But, you know, when when parents will complain about a coach or or complain about all these circumstances that the, that the athlete has no control over, right? It's easy to blame a coach. And I, for, I mean, I'm thinking like as our children's coaches are, but he always talked about like, it's your job to figure out what that coach wants. Like you never, you will never hear us complain about a coach or a plan. It's your job to figure out what this coach needs from you. Mm. And to figure it out. What Mark was Mark as was opposed the, to what I need for me. Yes, yes. You're yeah. not giving me an opportunity. You're not playing me mm. enough. You're you're or, or a parent. You're not giving my son. But but that applies to every walk it, of life. It, what does my it, boss right. need? Yes. It takes the power yes. away from the athlete or yes, the person. Yes. When when we as parents exa- like what you're saying, Leanne is saying is so important. Well, you actually say it. Yeah, I'm but just you you it. actually are way smarter <laughs> saying it. But this idea of this idea of of trying to console our kids or or comfort our kids by saying the coach did this or the referees did this or whatever. It is taking all the power away from your children. It is disempowering them. It is saying, hey, you actually don't have any control over your right. circumstance. It's, it's, it's one of the things that for some reason our generation, us included, like we have this tendency to, I don't know if it's a protective behavior or what is, but really the end result is you're stealing your, your child's power, their belief that they can actually affect change, right? And so the way Leanne approaches it so often is just like, hey, the girls come home and they're frustrated with the coach didn't play me or the, the referees were, were unfair or somebody on the other team did this. And like, it's kind of like, well, you can control that. Like, how are you going to earn their trust? How are you going to overcome the complications? How are you going to play around the fouls? You know, how are you going to manage the referees? Like, and so that is a gift that 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 I think Lee's given our children. It's been super, well, super. And, cool. and I feel like the girls have see it. They see it. I mean, there there is one ref though that is high school ref that I actually. <laughs> we are super passionate about this topic. <laughs> no, there is one high school ref that actually I have a real issue with. Well, there's one player sure. also that Leanne was super passionate she about. She punched my daughter. She punched my daughter. And we I have, may have a whole history a little... of Leanne as a fan that we could go on for hours. <laughs> Listen, the 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 seat you don't want, no offense, is right in front of the, the head coach's wife. You just, <laughs> I, you know I, what? I agree. You know what? I'm not talking you. I'm not talking right. Cheryl. I'm just talking generally. Yeah. Yeah. Like, hey. But then I, but I am so <laughs> tame compared to my mother oh. that I that oh, I that I'm is, always like I yeah. am I am chill. Hey, I am so you chill. learned. You know? have the, are you allowed to tell those stories? No. Okay. <laughs> they are so politically right. incorrect and so did not age get well. The, get the beat button ready. Yeah, right. exactly. <laughs> yeah. Okay, your two other daughters. Yes. Yeah, and then and then Incredible. Layla's a junior, and she is a really special dancer. Awesome. She she dances at Smash, and she's she's training right now for the Nutcracker and. She's got her whole, you know, she just had, she had spinal surgery. Uh, she had really Whoa. severe scoliosis last, uh, a year ago, April. Yep. And she's still and, dancing? Yes. And what? backhand the world? springs. I mean, it really is. I mean, when you go into that surgery and it was really severe, I mean, clearly, I mean, clearly there's a choice, but really we didn't have a choice with the long-term effects. And she had, you know, she had spinal surgery in April. First, first surgery that the doctor got to do outside of COVID, which was a yeah, huge blessing. It was a blessing, yeah. And her recovery was miraculous and beautiful. But you do not know exactly what you're going to be able to do. And the doctor, are we talking like walking? No, you don't. You yeah. don't understand. So this is surgery where she had a seventy percent, a 70, uh, 70 degree yeah. 
curvature in her spine. It was just progressing worse and worse. And the doctor's like, we have to do something. And she's dancing full time. She's so strong that she had actually been able to hide it for a long for time. And then but in pain? it getting worse. No, she didn't. Wasn't having a ton That's of why pain. Kind of she just doesn't know. That's kind of okay. why it went so long, oh kind of gosh. undiagnosed. It's actually one of her dance teachers that said yeah. something. And I was like, really? And then we like went in. Like saw it in her yes, neck or saw something? Yes, saw it in her And then over the, course of the next, yeah. over the course of the next and then we six monitored months, it. you could really, you could, it was starting to progress more and more and more. So she had surgery from the, from the bottom of her neck all the way down to the bottom of her waist. She's got the most incredibly, like, I'm so jealous of this scar that she has. It's so <laughs> fantastic because it runs a whole length of her back. She was, a, it's a, it's a huge surgery. They put two rods in her back. And then after the surgery, we're kind of like, she was terrified going to surgery. Like, what am I going to be able to do? She comes home after a week, like can barely walk around the block. Like it was, it was really, it was, she was so brave and so tough. She was and so now tough. she's doing every type of acrobatics and like unbelievable dancing. And she's soloing these features things. Whoa. She's going to compete in Vegas here in a, in a, in a month or so. Like it just is, yeah. She is as she's the toughest person in our family. How? It's yeah. not even close. I, I mean, I, it's super, I mean, our doctor was, which the the spine, the pediatric spine guy of all pediatric was here in Utah, which is such a huge blessing, because we I called every doctor from every team we were ever associated with to check. Mm. <laughs> he was like, Doctor no, Smith. That's right? the guy, Doctor yeah. Smith. Yeah. Shout out um, to Doctor Smith. Thank you, but brother. But he was he was very confident. He's like, can she do a back handspring now? And I said yes. He's like, then she should be able to do one after. I'm like, how? Is she, is she, she's gonna have this, this rod. <laughs> but does it reinforce like, we, yeah. something that uh, it just, is good it just, now? Yeah. Yes, and she grew an inch and a half. She was super high. So she that. literally oh, came wow. home an yeah. inch and a half. We measured before because we knew she would. She came home an inch and a half taller. The other girls were so so jealous. Because oh, height is the thing in your Oh, it is. Oh, it, is gosh, yeah. Yeah. it is yeah. huge. It is valued. It is huge. It is. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And Ella's still the tallest, but but I mean, they're all right. We're, how, they're all within. How tall is Ella? 5'11. But they're all within. Yeah. Like if I'm in heels, like we are all, we just got family pictures. We all look exactly the same. Oh, kind that's funny. funny. Yeah, it is funny. We're all with, they're all, I mean, Avery's five. Eleven. She's there. She's not quite taller than Ella, but she's like yeah. five ten and three fours. So All they, yeah, about that. Yeah. 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 Okay, so yeah, so she's younger. dancing. And then Shay Shay, Shay. Shay. Shay is thirteen. Just turned thirteen, and she has loved basketball and volleyball. But I think volleyball is 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 in first place right now for sure. I she mean, already I, what a already, fun uh, diversity. Yeah. They, yeah. You sport. know they've all. You know my dad used to say. I actually have an article where he said this in a Father's Day article that you expose your kids to a million things and hope they find something that they love. Yeah, and 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 for us so far, our girls have found something, yeah. and something that brings them a lot of joy. Like for girls, for for raising daughters, I love that if Avery's having a cruddy day, she goes out on, on the tennis court, and she and she and 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 Ella will go shoot, and Layla will go dance, and there's something about having something where you're. That is where your confidence comes from, not externally, but internally. And I, we've been really blessed that that our girls have found things that they love and that they're willing to work and sacrifice for. That's yeah. the other part. That's the other great thing about sports, right, Jeremy? Like, love sports, the vehicle like, that yeah. is for life. Right? And sacrificing and playing different roles on different seasons and different teams and, and embracing that. I mean, there, it's, it's super important. And we're I, super grateful. I feel things I wouldn't feel otherwise without sports. Amen. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I always laugh at like breaking news on the news. I'm like, oh, this is every game. Yep. Yeah. We don't know what's going right. to happen. We're watching it live and describing right. it live. Um, political conventions. That's every home game for yep. BYU basketball. 100%. We gather. We root for a thing. We get excited. We feel emotions, right? Yeah. Like some of the highest highs and lowest lows of my life, you know, mm-hmm. are connected to sports. People want to act like sports aren't life. Yep. Sports yeah. are a big part of yep. our lives. Obviously, Absolutely. there's a different – it's on a different plane. Yep. But it's this vehicle where we can – Live out things, learn things, feel things. Mm-hmm. It's amazing, right? And it it's brings amazing. us together, which yes. is so I love the beautiful. connection that it is. Yes. yes. And and BYU is a unique place. And yes. I want to get into that later with you yeah. guys, kind of the decision to come here, yeah. to come back. Yeah. Yeah. But, okay, we covered your covered your daughters. <laughs> They're amazing. <laughs> okay, you. so you, you you grow up. Your, your dad's yeah. a basketball yeah. coach. Yeah. You we move got, around a ton. We did. We moved How did that shape you? Because I moved a lot, too. Yeah. And my wife kind of says, you have certain issues because you moved. <laughs> You have certain strengths because you moved. Yes, I, was I added that part. She didn't tell that to me. <laughs> <laughs> How did that shape you? Because it sounds like you moved a ton. We did move a, a whole bunch. And I feel like, I mean, it's one of the blessings of kind of living this life as a mother because I lived it as a child is I, I get to see how it ends. Like I know the mm. blessings of being the only, the new kid 
over and over. The world needs those kids that then for the rest of their life, they notice the new kid. They know the new kid needs a friend. They know the new kid needs someone to eat lunch with. My girls know that. And if they didn't, it would be, it's drilled into them. Like you, like there is, there are so many things that you learn in that process. Um, I had a, a wise mother, which, uh, you know, we've moved around so much and been in all these different wards and communities and just those those women that were just wise and a little bit further down the path in life than I was. She, 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 she's, she was a military, a, a daughter of a military. She's like, the world needs people like us, Leanne. Mm. I was like, you're right. They do need people like us that see the world differently. That we're, we're not in the same house the, their whole life. I'm not attached to very many things. I mean, that maybe I don't. That's an issue that your wife would say you have. But I mean, like I, <laughs> could, I could I could sell our house and be gone in a heartbeat. Like I'm not attached to things. Um, Can you tell the story about when you and Damon first time you walked into Corona? It was you and Damon, right? Yeah. It was awful. Yeah, just just like I mean, just we, we high school. My first year of high school, we walk in and I know nobody. Yeah. And my brother is walking ahead of me, and he kind of spent the summer playing with the basketball basketball guys. At least and, knew and somebody. He, yeah, he was a cool cat, and I had I had been on the volleyball team, but I, I did I walked into that school, and I I thought I was ill. <laughs> I'm like, gonna throw up. I you think I'm physical sick. Reaction. I'm sick. Yes. And I just was right with my brother, but then he went with the basketball boys and I just kept walking. Is this the story you mean? Yeah, that moment and of separation. And then there was a point where I am like, don't know anyone. And bless Damon's heart, he came running to find me before class. He's like, I was so worried you followed me to the circle. Because <laughs> like, <laughs> he was walking. He's like, oh, tell me Leanne's not behind me. Tell me Leanne. I'm like, no. Because he kind of joined the basketball dudes, and yeah. I just kind of like took the cue and kept walking. So it's been but, amazing to watch Leanne, not only as our girls – have moved from school to school to school. Avery was in four different states and four different schools consecutive years mm. as a young person. But, but to listen to her prepare our daughters, not just for those moments when they're going in as the new person, which they've done over and over again, but now also after we've been here for a while, still preparing them every single time when they go to school, you have to go seek out the new people yeah, and I welcome just say, them. See it's the, just see, such a beautiful See, kids. Yes. see the kids that, you, that go outside your, your, your circle. I was trying to tell my daughter, there are a bunch of kids like you, because we moved recently, mm -hmm. so we kind of went through this, where I was like, hey, I moved a bunch when I was little. I know exactly what this is like. You, and there are other kids like you. Go find them. Yes. Yeah, yes. you be the yes. one, right? Yes. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think, you know, like Mark said, especially when your girls are young, you know, I would say, okay, find some. We're all going to come back. I'm going to pick you up, and we're all going to have two names of someone that we met, mom, mom included. Quantify it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And also pumping them up and like it's going to be great and it's going to be okay and then crying the whole way home is the mom <laughs> just After like you drop them off. oh yeah. yes yes just like oh please i used to go i mean in georgia and north carolina i got banned from the, i used to go watch like from the parking lot to see if they were playing like to see like where they were in the are, are like ma'am yeah and then and it was 500 feet, please? it wasn't until someone knocked and i was like oh oh this is kind of creepy Leanne, okay, i get it Leanne <laughs> would have got go. banned from the mtc too the parking lot outside the mtc if they yeah but you know what it is what it is <laughs> i am the mother i get it i have raised this child I get it. and she's in the mtc and you're gonna try to keep me out you're like, I'm doing this are, are, we, are we allowed to talk about the contraband that you were trying to throw over the fence at the I, MTC? I, I sent out hey. something every single day. I went to <laughs> every day? my email <laughs> nice. every single day, and I may have timed it perfectly to watch her walk from <laughs> there to lunch. And it may have gotten to the point where she didn't even look over it. She just kind of like. Yeah, there's like, more. I was, I, I was there. I was, I was incognito. Wow, but there was a that's point awesome. where I was just like, she's my daughter. I had helped her get to this yeah. point. It's Ooh. all good. I snuck into the MTC one time and had lunch with my cousin. See? I acted like I was Very a teacher. Did you have a tag? Right no, you but I looked like I was a teacher. Oh, that's well, I did Leanne, that at BYU. Leanne yeah. would time up a drive-by where she would just walk by and toss Jimmy John's over the fence. I did that And then time. a couple missionaries would come running down and grab it and run it. I don't know no that way. we can advocate there were this. There were things that's hidden funny. by different places. <laughs> I have no problem with like it. Like in the real world, it's like, like, like you come, a come razor blade or something in the jail. Jimmy John's. Yeah. Oh no, goodness. it was Jimmy John's. It was Freaky Fest, so it was fun. <laughs> okay, so, yeah, you, you grew up and you end up yeah. working yeah, at yeah, ESPN yeah. So, so, out of yeah, BYU. Yeah, yeah. So, so um, you know, a big chunk, my dad was at the U here, and, and then we I did all of high school at Arizona, when Arizona State. And then I went to my first couple years at Arizona State, and then I came to BYU. And um, so you went to ASU. Yes, Arizona gotcha. State. Yep, for like almost almost had my my associates mm -hmm. when I when I transferred, and my dad just wanted me to have the BYU experience. It was really my dad that I, I didn't. I mean, I had a, some girlfriends that were up here, but he was just like, I want you to go and just be 
you. You know, you're you're uh, you know when you're sometimes you're not when you're living outside of Utah or maybe outside where there's a large member of member, members of the church on a large population, you're different because of the way you live and di- you're different because of the choices. And he's like, you're gonna go to BYU and you're just gonna be Leanne Archibald. You're not gonna be the one that doesn't drink. You're not. And he wanted me to have that experience. It was almost like I'm like, okay, Dad. And I came up here and had a phenomenal experience. I feel very passionate about my time at BYU. Um, but I did shed, shed some tears pulling up when I, I could not believe I was here. I mean, growing up a Ute, and then when I came, right. I, I just really could not believe that I was at BYU. And, and I kind of, like, there was, there was, like, there was a little bit of growth that needed to take place, and I loved it. And the people that I met here, my experience here, I would wish it for everybody. I mean, it was just a wonderful experience. Anyway, I, I graduated. And so, you do the best major. <clears throat> Yeah, yeah, the journalism. journalism. Right. Yeah. And, and you know what? I knew I wanted to go into communications. In fact, that was one of the draws to Arizona State. They had the Walter Cronkite School of Journalism. Yes, was super phenomenal, legit. Right? Yep. So that was, that was a, I mean, I, there were thoughts that maybe I was going to go back. I'll go up and have this experience, and then, and then I'll come back. You want to be a reporter? Uh, I didn't know. I mean, I, lo- I loved PR. I didn't want to dedicate my life to broadcasting. Like, that was something I felt like was almost like an acting gig, that I was mm. like, yeah. if, that, if that's something that's in the cards, it'll... It'll manifest itself. <laughs> but and then I ultimately a, a professor at BYU, when I was sitting kind of figuring it out, he was like, journalism is the basis of everything that you love and everything you're interested in. PR, if advertising, broadcast. Jur- and so he's like, maybe that's what you should do. And I, and I was like, good. And, and so I, de- I declared that journalism. And then they had I don't know if they had it when you were here, Jerem, but um, they had a great internship program, the communications department that. You you applied and you got accepted and then they placed you with an internship. No, I had to so, do my own. Uh, so I did took, KSO radio at okay. six a.m. in Salt Lake. <laughs> there you go. Nice. I caught four thirty a.m. buses. <laughs> That's <Salt Lake>. awesome. <laughs> yeah, but they took four advertising, broadcast, PR, and journalism majors. So sixteen of us went out to New York for I almost two months. We stayed at the International House oh, right near. They, they still have this. They do. They I just do wasn't good enough it? to get it. No, no, no. But I, I, it is super competitive. You're right. They have a I, New York City kind of spot. Okay, but yeah, I yeah, was told yeah. they discontinued it. So maybe it's a version well, they, of it? they have an internship with uh, New York One, I think. Okay. Yep. Okay, well, this was like yep. we were at NBC. Anyway, I was That's at Reader's awesome. Digest. And so, Reader's Digest. Yeah, I was there so for back summer. Back when that used to be I mean, at the on, dentist. That's totally. so cool. <laughs> People that don't know Reader's Digest, like, yeah. it ruled the world. Yeah, if you don't know what Reader's Digest is, tweet at me. I don't know what Reader's Digest is. And I was actually one of the. I was really like it was a paid internship, which was super. Oh, that's nice. Right? Mine was unpaid. Yes, mine was. <laughs> the four thirty a.m. bus for nothing. <laughs> so I went out that summer before I graduated. A phenomenal experience. Fell in love with the city, and then came back and um, for my senior year. And during that process, I met Heather Peterson. So we both we met in Comms Law. We were both. Um, applying like we just found I, I applied to that too she, like I applied for the internship and we both got it and then we were out in the city and her she was with supposed to be with Mademoiselle magazine and it got bought so her internship was canceled but on her own she had applied to be an intern at the late show with David Letterman so we're out there and spent the summer there she was interning at late show they let it count <laughs> and I was at Reader's Digest and we came back to graduate and they loved her I mean every year there there was 11 um interns in the fall and in the winter and the summer and they'd get 11,000 applicants every Whoa. year and they only picked 11. 22 would interview and from the 22 they'd pick 11 and Heather got got that internship. Wow. And then uh, they loved her and invited her to come back and be kind of do all of Dave's Christmas shopping and Christmas business. So she went back in December and then at the end of the of the of the that senior year they offered her a job to be his full-time assistant. I had an opportunity. It started off as an internship at ESPN in the graphics department. And it was actually kind of through my dad a little bit that I was able to get an interview. And, and, and I had this, so I had this internship that quickly developed into a job opportunity once I was there. And I wasn't there long, but I did think I had arrived. I mean, I, I, mean, I was a coach's kiddo, right? Coach's daughter, journalism. I used to be up and sit and watch SportsCenter. Every single night. I mean, I just thought I just need to be there, like in the everything. studio. Yes, watching. yes, yeah. up there. I was the only one. Yeah. Like I just couldn't believe, and I'm in the lunchroom with all these, all the sports. I mean, it was it was a wonderful experience. And there was there was a show called Classic Sports America. You know, Charlene Wells had hosted it, the former you know Miss America, and it's kind of journalism. yeah, yes. And then Dan Debenham had taken over after her. And it was kind of, historically, they had highlighted high school athletes that ended up being Heisman Trophy winners, Olympic athletes. But it was as they were in high school. 
so Dan was hosting that show and connected with him. So I, I kind of felt like my path was I was going to, this was going to pay the bills, graphics. I, I was were learning. Were you a font coordinator? A font, no, like, no, no. It was literally like I was entering stuff. Like oh, that you was were like was, running yes, the graphics. Yes, yes. Oh, wow. Okay. And then work, and Dan was super generous with me. He actually ended up leaving and coming here to start a morning show. But um, it, I wasn't there like, I mean, we're like a couple of months and the Rosie O'Donnell show starts. And one of Dave's assistants left to work for Rose, write for Rosie's show. And mm. Heather was like, you should come down and interview. And I was like, I'm good. I, I, this is, I'm this is where, yes. And I just thought, I'm here and I'm going to work. I'm going to just win them all over. <laughs> that was the feeling. And my dad was like, Sunshine, you got to go. You just, the, the, the interview itself will be an experience. You don't have to take the job. You don't even oh, know. Oh, just at least interview. Yeah, just go interview. Like, yeah, why not? To go. Go. Like this is, and so I, I went. And I walked into the Ed Sullivan Theater, like before I even talked to a person. And the feeling was so just electric. I, I was like, I don't know where I'm in, but I don't want to leave. <laughs> no, was anyone in there? No, no, it was it, just like walking into the Ed Sullivan office building, the theater. No, it was just like the whole vibe. You're just taking it the, all in. Yes, for, the for, whole thing. For people that haven't been there, it's just no, really north of Times Square. I mean, you're taking in the whole yeah, it's, city, it's, it's right, as you walk Broadway. in. It's but incredible. just like I took a cab and I just walked in and I'm like, I'm here. And you just was like, it, it was a, it was an electric feeling Very for different me. from Bristol for those who know. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yes, yes, That's yeah. right. Yes. Yeah. Very, yeah. Few, very, very different. And then interviewed and, and luckily a couple weeks later, I was offered the job. The first question they asked me is if, if I could drive a stick shift. I was like, I can rock a stick shift. I drove a Honda <laughs> like, I lived in Pocatello. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I and mean, that's all I know how to drive. But I thought, and I, sometimes you never know. But it was something was that, that his car or something? Yes. And I, I actually never, I mean, I drove his, there were times I drove his cars. His being different. David Letterman. Yes. And the idea was if you were in a position that you had to get him out of, whatever, whatever, could you drive a stick shift? And some of those city girls, no. And I was like, oh, yeah, ups, heel, down. I, you I moving totally. <laughs> around and being you're like, this is where this comes in. Yeah, like that, that really? like grid of I can move, I can yeah. do this, I can yeah. do whatever you need. Right? And, and also, I, am, I was a member of the church, but I grew up in a locker room. Like there is no, I mean, the You'd high be, pressure of television. That translates. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like you could yell and scream and I, I've heard it's it It's so true. The yeah. control yeah. room is the bench, mm-hmm. is the locker mm-hmm. room. Yep. A hundred percent. And in the moment and when things don't go well, I mean, Dave was How are you going to respond like totally. we're talking about? Yeah. I mean, How all these respond? lessons really yeah. translate to everything. I think that's why I love broadcasting because yeah. I can't play. I can't. I'm not the yeah. coach. But, like, I can be yep. in that area for me, yeah. right, yep. still yes. and compete. And sort you know? of an important part of the team, for real. I feel I mean, like a part of the team, even you though are. I'm you are. not, but like you we're are. together. You're a massive part of the team because of what kidding? you do. Yeah. Right? I, mean, I, just, I, I guess I did feel that way after uh, BYU beat Utah. Yeah. Walking, I was trying to get down to the field. Yeah. And all of a sudden, everyone was celebrating with me. Yep. Yeah. Like, Jeremy, we did it. That's and I was like, right. oh, this is a cool moment. Yeah. I'm glad I can't get down to the field right now. Well, but, you're a part of the team that Mark sells. I mean, well, I'm just saying, when he talks to recruits yeah. and he talks about BYU TV and he talks about Sports Nation, it's like oh, that's really nobody nice. has it. I mean, so, We're lucky because so really, we believe this together, and the same thing for this. Leanne is like is like you are the connector, like you help connect these players to all the people that are sharing this yeah, deal, so. and that's 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 what's leading. You know what? I want to be number uh, seventy three then. Yeah. We're good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, back to but Letterman. Yeah, yeah. So Sorry. so I I got the job and I and I took it, and ESPN was. I mean, Aldo Prado was in the graphics department. He was super like, you got to go, and I went. And, and and Heather and I lived together, and we worked together. Um, Are you living the dream right now? You're like, yeah. I'm in New York. It was awesome working with the Letterman. Show. Yeah, I, I really did. Think, I think I had. I had, my parents were huge. Car- I had grown up. They loved Carson. Like I grew up yeah. watching Johnny Carson, and Dave loved Johnny. I mean, and if and Johnny loved Dave. <laughs> so I, I. So I mean, I, the whole experience was was off the charts. I mean, it was, it was a wonderful way to be young and in New York City. And he was so generous at exposing us to things and giving us opportunities. And, like, you got to go do this, and we got to do this, and you've got to. Oh, and, the inner, and we like, got to live, actual New yes, York experience. I lived way beyond my means in the sense of, you know, I, like Garth Brooks' legendary concert in, in Central Park. Over I mean, a million on. people. In I didn't get invited to it, but Dave got invited to it. He got one ticket and he got two tickets and he's like, "You and Heather gotta go." <laughs> Are you kidding so me? Fun. That's so incredible. we jump in and we have a driver that's dropping us off at, at Central Park. And in he VIP knows area. stick shift, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> and just, so there were, he was so generous with us. Or like, and, like, like so yeah, cool. Like, 
twenty one club. You guys just talk, talk about it. like so fun. Like so, this to so give a feel of it. The job was uh, was different every day, right? And, oh, and yeah. Dave was an extremely private person and still is. And so he wasn't a Hollywood guy that I'm like, I need sushi at 3 a.m. There was none He's of that. He's an Indiana guy. Right? Yes, yes. And um, so working for him was, I, I just, it, it, was, it was great. But we, he was doing a dinner at the 21 Club in the wine cellar, which is also very exclusive to get that, with Don Rickles. And I'd set the whole thing up. The whole, Heather and I had done all the details, and it was going to be Dave. How old are you? I'm 21. <laughs> So I was a young, so this, I was just this bare- 21 turned- Mormon girl in New York. Yeah. Yep, hey, 21 <laughs> Club down the line, Taylor, Don Rickles, David Letterman. That's great. I, I had my 22nd birthday there. So we go, uh, we set the whole thing up, and it was, um, and Dave didn't go do that a lot. Like it was, this was, Don Rickles was special to Dave, and so they have this dinner, and it's going to be his, Dave's producers, and his his monologue writer, Bill Sheft, and, and his his wife, and, and Heather and I are like making sure the cars are there, and we're coming up, and Dave's like, you guys should come. We're like, I'm sorry, what? He's like, you should come. I want you to come. And we're like, okay, great. The door shut, and then Heather's like, we got to put lipstick on. <laughs> so we went upstairs, freshened up, and we went and we sat at the at in the in the wine cellar at the Twenty One Club. Don Rickles, I, I can't, I don't know his exact age at the time, but he was later in years. But he ran that room, and was hilarious. And I was sitting to his left. I actually was sitting right next to him, and he would he would whisper to me people's names like who's in the blue shirt i'm like so and so and he lori lori i mean and he's telling <laughs> you know, stories you can hear don rickles voice right? he just, right? Wanted, voice he just, he just yeah. wanted to use the right names right yeah. yes, he, yes so it was, uh, it you're was the connector picture. yes i was just kind of like that's it and, and the it, setter comes out yeah you're just, exactly you're just, yes, <laughs> yes you're just setting to the pin <laughs> yeah totally. but he told <laughs> stories about carson and frank sinatra and i remember sitting there going like i knew the moment was big when i was sitting there like this is Amazing. Like 21 and Club, one of the most famous longtime restaurants. They just, they closed and the they're in the business. basement, yeah. in the private like dining yeah. area in the basement that nobody ever gets to go to. There's just so many experiences. And it was just sweet. It's so, I mean, for Dave to be like, you should come. And I should just be like, okay, <laughs> totally chill. But when, and it was, it was, we, yeah, we had, there, there's a whole list of, you, I was actually Dave's cigar specialist, yeah. which is hilarious. <laughs> Every time, every time I'd come, he's like, are you Tell like, me more. He's she like, was running you? the Thermidor. I mean, the Humidor. Humidor. The Humidor. Yeah, you, yes. The Rockies are calling yeah. you later. And like, he, how do we do this? And he didn't actually smoke at the time. So, I mean, Dave did not drink. And he, he wanted did to not own smoke, him? But he, he, ha- he had, and he had a locker, at, I mean, a Humidor at Davidoff. And, and, but he, What's Davidoff? That's, that's a, a cigar, um, I would say, store, Humidor people store gotcha. there. Because he had mass amounts of cigars. Gotcha. You would seal, you would you would store them there, yeah. and then we'd have them shipped over, and we I had little humidors. But it was actually it's, it's actually a really sweet memory of mine when Dave was teaching me how they're supposed to smell, how they're supposed to sound. Like if you if they they sound, then they're they're dry. And I mean, at the time, I could have rattled you off like you're the world's Cohibo Robusto, yeah, Mormon expert on yes. cigars. And yes. he'd be like, "Oh dear, are you going to go to hell for this?" I'm like, "As long as I don't smoke them, I'm not smoking them." <laughs> but I was his, I was the cigar specialist and the champagne. I mean, I knew all this stuff. It was really funny. It, it, it was it was. You're an excellent little. executive assistant. Exactly. Oh my god. Exactly. Gosh, yes. And and then the job really developed into I started doing his his philanthropic work. So when Mark and I. Mm. Met Mark was living in Indianapolis, and how many I, years later is this? This How old is do you almost, know? Four, almost four years. So I was twenty five. So twenty one, twenty two, yeah, yeah ninety nine, yeah. ninety eight, ninety eight. Yep. And so um, we had started. He owned a race team, and we had started doing charity work with his race teams. We'd go to the city. We'd have. Is it NASCAR? Under, is it? Uh, it was kart racing. He's kart. Moved, but it was kart at the gotcha. time. Gotcha. Um, Bobby Ray Hall was actually the driver, and it was Team Ray Hall. And so Heather and I would travel to all these different cities and do philanthropic work in the city with underprivileged kids. They'd come to the race, they'd, they'd, the whole thing. Why and did then, you ever quit this job? Because <laughs> I fell in love with this <laughs> tall drink of water right here. <laughs> and then Dave had an idea. Um, to, he wanted to kind of go back to India, ha, ha, provide the experiences for kids in Indianapolis that, that he had growing up. And so that was, that was part of, that was the backdrop. And I, I, it's very important, and I think this is so special about Dave. Everything he did was anonymous. He has done tremendously generous things, and nobody knows. And the only condition being, you can't know it's him. And and I and I'm not trying to say what he's done, right? But he is a, an but extremely you know. yeah. generous person. That um, and I think in that world, 
That is that is that's when, when rare. Lee says she took over his philanthropic activity. That is a massive empire of work that was actually so well, and, cool. and it changed. It changed and changed. And Heather did it for years to come, and it and it grew and and, and it was very private. But I, it's just like that's pretty rare in that world. But our so our awesome. first so so Mark and I get Mark and I get set up by my brother, and we how. Mark, Phone call. Yeah. yeah, Mark, you know him. So or we, had been, we had we had we kind of knew each other a little bit through basketball. He's a Division One college basketball player, and then we kind of got to we were at a camp together, and we we knew each other. And he's like, "Hey, next time you're in the city, I was with the the Pacers at the time." He's like, "Next time you're in the city, you got to call my sister." So kind of fun. The Mark, city being New York. Yeah, yeah. So Mark, my dad recruited Mark. My dad recruited Mark at Arizona State. Your dad. Recruited my dad Mark. recruited Mark, and you so my told dad, my your dad, your future father-in-law, no. <laughs> Yes, I know. but I didn't know but about Leanne. Know and I know about Leanne. <laughs> you would have said that yes. deal. <laughs> but my dad had passed away before Mark and I met. So so at this point, Mark and I, we had met and we we were in love and I went to visit his family and his his mom and dad saved everything, like organized binders of all the recruiting. And so we had handwritten letters from my dad. Oh, my God. To Super my cool. future husband. And my dad had very distinct handwriting. And back then you hand wrote a note. Yes. And, and he's also super fun. Yeah. I want to point out, so Mark, fun. you handwrite notes too. Yes, I've received multiple from you yes. recently. Yeah. thank you, by yeah. the way. Yeah. That, a handwritten you. note is very personal yeah. and awesome. Yeah. So we had to see my dad's handwriting to Mark. I mean, one of the one of the funny there was a postcard of an ocean view. So my dad is at Arizona State, and this is a postcard of an ocean view. And he said, Mark, this beautiful scenery is just west of our campus. <laughs> He's just like five hours west, but yeah, whatever. Whatever but works, I, let's go. I'm reading this stuff, and I'm just like, oh, my God. So You're not funny. recruiting work. So oh funny. It was great. So funny. So anyway, so Damon met Mark at the Pete Newell camp in Hawaii. Mark was attending the pro camp. Damon oh, was coaching the Pete it. Newell yeah. camp. Yeah. Damon Big was coaching. Yeah. And yeah. they knew each other at LDS, and they kind of knew of each other. And then I, coincidentally, met Damon. In San- so Damon flies home from Hawaii to San Francisco. I fly from New York to San Francisco. I meet Damon. He's like, I just met the male version of you. Like, dude, he is you, but he's a dude. And he's going to call you for Letterman tickets. And so, no, 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 he didn't. He's going to call, call yeah. you to go to dinner. That's what yeah. he said. And to then you dinner. called for tickets. And yeah. I was like, what the But heck? he doesn't explain, oh, by the way, this guy's in the NBA? No. Yeah, I mean, he just, he just said, Mark Pope, I just met him, and he's you. And Mark Damon played it perfectly, mind yeah. you. He told me he's going to call him. And asked take you to dinner. He told Mark, "Hey, you should call her for Letterman tickets. She'll totally hook you up." <laughs> I, mean, I mean, it's really beautiful. It's really beautiful. So Mark's like calling for tickets, and I was kind of you were confused. Yeah. You're like, "Wait, I I thought, no, you were not confused. You were upset. You're like, why is this dude calling me and asking for tickets? Your expectations yeah. like, were not that? met. But yeah. Wait, do you know? Have you heard of him? You know what? I didn't. But you know, it's funny. It's like he was at Washington and played yeah. Arizona State. So I literally would have saw, seen him play his freshman sophomore In year. In person. Yes, at UW. But what I do know is I remember the short list, as you said, you know, the LDS kids who yes. like, are at UConn or Kansas. Like I knew Nick Robinson at yes. Stanford yes. because he was a member of the church. Yes. yes. Yeah. And so I don't remember saying Mark Pope is at UW or at Kentucky, but I just knew that I knew all the LDS. You know what I mean? So it, I didn't. It wasn't like I knew, oh, this is Mark Pope. Not at all. Not at all. So then, Did so that then, help or hurt in the process? Oh, it helped. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm telling you, it was key. Like, the fact that we never lived in the same city the entire time we were dating was, like, magic because you never she lived in never the same got city? to know me well enough to know this was a big mistake. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was magic, actually. I fell fast and okay. I fell hard. Okay, <laughs> that's, that's how you met. I want to pause there because yeah. I want to get your upbringing. Yeah. yeah. And then we'll, get, then we'll come back to that point. Yeah. My, my upbringing way less Seattle, interesting. Seattle, Bellevue? Uh, yep, born in Omaha, Nebraska. Lived in New York until uh, I was in middle school and then and moved in to New Seattle. York again? In Westchester County, which is north of the city. My dad worked in the city. Uh, so we had a, p- a healthy appreciation and passion and love for the city. Uh, so you have this And how connection. hard it was, right? How hard that city is to live in. And then moved to Seattle and, and uh, went to high school there. And, and then um, went my first two years to the University of Washington and got, got fired from, from there as a basketball player and then, and then went to Kentucky and had an un- unbelievable journey there. Won a national championship. Won a national championship, yep. Yeah. Then played one year overseas and then came back and played a couple years for the Pacers. And then that is when, you know, it was, it was after year one with the Pacers that, that Leanne and I finally connected for yeah, the first so he's, time. Yeah, so he played his rookie year and then we met. Yep. The lockout year, 98. The lockout year, yeah. that's right. Okay, I do have to ask you, Joel McHale – 
He oh, was comedian. Wow, let's go. Did you play against him in high yes, school or something? Yes, Joel McHale. Uh, so one of my best friends in the world, Scott Dedrickson, played at Mercer Island. Mercer Island was uh, – Quinn Snyder actually played at Mercer Island. So Quinn was a senior when I was a freshman. Head coach of the Jets. And so he was – you know, we had this huge um, growth in, in talent that was coming out of Seattle, and Quinn led the way. So Quinn was the first guy out of Seattle to actually be a big-time college basketball player. Did he have player. the same hair? He had unbelievable hair. I would watch him in high school and be like, man, I'd kill for that. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> and uh, so, so, and, and Merce Island was an epic, it just, a, you know, it, was, it became one of the great programs in the West under the legendary coach Ed Peppel. And so Scott Deese was a dear friend of mine. And Joel McHale, one of Scott's best friends, played there. And then, you know, we were at University of Washington together. And I never became super close with Joel. Just knew him from a distance through Scott. But come on, what a, what a fun role, you know, ride he's been on. So. He brought it up on some podcast. And yeah. I was like, yeah. what? Yeah. yeah. That's so great. great. Funny so connection. Great. Okay, growing up, um, when did you realize you were good at basketball? Uh, I was a I was a runner like that's what I did. You're uh, a I, I always thought I was gonna be, I always thought I was gonna runner. run in the Olympics. I thought I was gonna run the 800 meters. I thought I was gonna be Sebastian Coe. He's my hero growing up. He was like legendary Sebastian, who? Sebastian Coe. Co. Sebastian Coe. Uh, you know they the in in Britain they had these great 100 800 meter runners and Sebastian Coe later went into politics and has done a ton of stuff. But at the time like I was like oh that's what I want I want to do with my life. And then I just quickly realized that I was. Pretty slow, and so <laughs> he, he was nationally ranked. He was he was a great as young, a, yes, runner. As as a young, young, real young yes. youngster, as a twelve year old, runner, right? Okay, twelve year, really good. Yep. And then it was like, my. You get too tall? Yeah, too, just too slow, and it's too tall. And then is but a, then you pressed at Kentucky, and it all came back. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's right. Then it came in handy. Actually, it really came in hoops in because my condition was always the best thing I had going for me. So then, after my uh, freshman year in high school, I had a great one of the great high school coaches of all time, Rich Belcher, who just is a great coach in every sense of the word. After my freshman year, he's like, "Hey, you got to shut down, try and cross country. You got to do this full full time." And then from then on, it was full time. Okay, so you go to Washington, kind of the local team there. Yep, and then. You go to Kentucky. Yep, that was that was a game changing moment in your life, was it not? Yeah, it Being was. Able to go to Kentucky. I was I was super blessed. I was super blessed to not go to Kentucky straight out because I wouldn't have understood what it was. Mm. It's one of the reasons why I love transfer so much to come into BYU because they actually understand what the rest of college basketball is and other co- and then they get to see what this place is. Freshmen, not so much. They just come in and think, hey, this is college basketball. This is what is everywhere. And I had this incredible experience of going to Washington and really struggling and playing for a coach that I, I loved, but we just couldn't win. I wasn't good enough to help us win. And then and then he ultimately got fired, which is uh, we've talked about, one of the great failures in my life. And then and then I then I got then I got to go to Kentucky and just be like, wow. Basketball is actually really different from one place to the next. It was became my public clear and had an unbelievable experience there and it's great. And you know about transferring because you did it moving. Yes. You transferred yeah, life, right? right? Life, yeah. life, 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 yeah. which is crazy. Okay, so we're caught up <clears throat> in this uh, choose your own narrative book here. <laughs> <laughs> so you get set up. You I mean, you make a phone call. Yeah. You're disappointed because yeah. Yeah. it's so, not so, to go to well, dinner. Mark Pope didn't own a cell phone. This is at the beginning of the cell phone. So he calls. You're an NBA player. He, he's leaving a long time ago. He didn't even have a hotel room. Yes, that's right. He he was he was Wait, leaving living? me messages. So there he's in New no, York right. to was, negotiate yeah, for the yeah. for the union for the players union. So he's in New York. Oh, City. you're part of the negotiation. Yes. And he's leaving me messages. I'm getting these messages from our receptionist, like Mark Pope. This is his number. He's called you like three times. I'm calling the number back. And he's giving me his home number in Indianapolis because he's calling me from pay phones all around the city. We never connected. <laughs> I was in and out one day. I took a red eye in, was there for a day, and then flew out that night. Yeah, and like you yeah. showered at some athletic But club I was so somewhere. excited. I was like, hey, but no. And so we never connected. So then he goes Too back. bad it never worked out. Right. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> he goes back to Indianapolis and probably had like, what, five messages from So I, I get back to, so it had been a super long day because I, I took a red eye in, get there early in the morning. Finally made my way to the meetings and meetings all day, which the meetings were super fun. And then uh, – Are you being sarcastic? No. For, for me as a fan oh, of the were? NBA, it was so fun. Like seeing uh, these – David gr- Stern, uh, well, here's what we want. No, it is a player's union, but seeing like oh, these gotcha. leading characters yeah. in NBA history, like – Who's in the room? So yeah. upset with each other. Well, the, just so – I mean, I, I'll digress into a thousand stories, but yeah, so fun. <laughs> so then – I, then I race back to the airport, fly back to the United get in like 1 o'clock in the morning, struck out with Leanne, totally struck out, and then get into my apartment, roll in, and, you know, this is when you had a, like an answering machine, like a box. Oh, yeah. People won't understand what that yeah. is. 
And so press play on the messages, and Leanne has left me a message for each one. And I li- I'll never forget sitting down, like listening to the message, and then sitting down on the kitchen floor in my little, like, very cheap apartment. And, like, listen, I listened to like five times because – you could just hear the life and energy. I didn't know I'd never met her. Didn't really know that. Didn't really know anything about her. And then just hearing the life in her voice, I was like, "Wow, this! I got it. I have got to meet this this woman. I couldn't wait." So it was great. And then we email. I mean, email was new too. Yep. Jared. I mean, like '98. Yep. It's like We're he old. was literally the only person I was emailing. You're opening I, up Netscape. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. That's right. That's Dialing right. up and <laughs> <laughs> totally. So we actually talked on the phone. Like, so the first time he called me. Uh, I had, it was, we, it's memorable to both of us because I had just, I had ran the New York Marathon. And so I You ran home. the New no, York yeah. Marathon? No, no. Listen to this. Yeah, Let so me I do had, this. Wow. So, it's a, so I finally get it. We get around a call. It's a Sunday so afternoon. So this is the first time we're actually connecting. First time yes. I ever talked to her in person. What year is this? This is 1998. 98, 98 yeah. 98. And so the first time I call her, I call her. And this is what I know. I know she's living in New York, city I love. She's, she's working for David Letterman, which is super cool. And then I call her up and like all I hear is like a big party in the background. And it's her roommate, Heather, who, like, if there's a great human being that's been a dear friend to Leanne ever in the world, it's Heather, right? And so, and Heather is obviously really smart, and she's great. She's like, ah, I'm sorry. She's soaking in the tub. She just finished the New York Marathon. Like We're bath. having a post-game like party yeah. here in the ice bath, yeah. And um, and so then I was like, and she just finished the New York Marathon. I'm like, like I how have cool got is to this? talk to this how cool girl. Is she? Yes. Yeah. So eventually, you know, wait a couple hours, and then she called back, and we got to talk for a minute, and it's all. Awesome. And how's this? So the next day, so this is November 1, and the next, and Mark is living in Indianapolis. November 2nd is the day that, that Dave came up with this idea to start a charity in Indianapolis. The one, every Out month of the blue. charity. Out of the blue. Or was it? Or was it? Yeah. I was like, did that just happen? Another, I'm like, I'm kind of. Did you like that connect boy. two dots there? No, you're not like, yet. What? Not, I'm just like, that's just so weird. I just talked to that guy, that boy, that Mark Pope dude. Is Isn't like, that boy? Yeah, six foot ten. Well, he was referred, and he was actually re- <laughs> referred to when Dave eventually met Mark. He referred to him as the Mormon boy because everything the that we kind of were involved in was. I mean, I was Mormon number one. Heather was Mormon number two, depending on who he liked best that day. Yep. So he was the no, Mormon like, boy. No, like like bringing in the ratings. Yeah. Like he would alter who was Mormon number one and Mormon two. That's yeah. what they were called yes. at the show. It was delightful. <laughs> nice. It was delightful. Anyway, so he was a Mormon boy, but but um, I did not know that at the time. But then I our first date. So we for six weeks we're talking on the phone, we're emailing, and then I actually go to Indianapolis on behalf of Dave for work, and that was the first time we met in person. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. What's the first day? Oh, you tell it, babe. You take it. You take this. First day was not great. <laughs> it actually so worked out well, it, right? It sometimes perfect, sometimes but. life just collapses <laughs> on top of you. And so it just so happened that my brother and his wife were coming in, and they had some business event, and so I needed to take care of their one-year-old daughter. Oh, not even one. You did? She's a brand-new yes. baby. So his niece. So Mark You're the in- babysitter? <laughs> so I had to be the babysitter. But it just so happened that was the night that Leanne was getting in town. And like a hundred other things happened all at the same time. And so the first time I picked up Leanne, I was late with a baby in the back of the car to go grab her. It was, it was, it was, it was an epic. And a one-year-old. Yeah, it didn't go. Not a well. one. I mean, no, we're, a newborn. She's oh, a, a newborn. newborn. Like, she's in new. The, she's in, in, in like, a bassinet. Like, what like, haven't yes. you told me? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <thing>? Exactly. <laughs> like, I have a history. And like, oh, gosh. hey, let's be honest. You're an NBA player, yes. so who knows, right? Yes. But, yes. Yeah. So we, we, he, we, we went up. Mark had arranged to drop our, our well, my future, but his niece off. At <laughs> we were late for all award, of our activities. How quickly do you jump into that, by the way? This is my niece. Yes. Yes. Hi, this is my niece. It's not mine. <laughs> so we go, we drop, we drop the, we drop her off, and we had to drive away. And we were in such a rush, so we we, we, we finally c- kind of have. So I have some accommodations for this newborn child, and then we 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 missed our dinner reservation, and so again, Leanne's and, dinner is disappointingly and, missed. And I'm running out of gas, so we stop at a gas station. We walk, and I'm like, hey. Get whatever you want. No, it, it, it was literally, it was literally. It's like, on me. Yeah, go crazy. Yes. Like, oh, yeah, not okay. good. 
Yeah. And it's not like you can spoil this no. uh, lady here. And, you know I, and I mean? then the worst thing, was this the Christmas show? Yes, it So was then the I'm like, hey, show. there's in Indianapolis, there's like a downtown, there's like a Christmas spectacular in Indianapolis. <laughs> She's coming from New from York. New York City. Right? So we go to this <laughs> really fun and charming rinky dink. Uh, New York thing. So she left totally impressed. She's like, "This guy is fantastic." But I, w- Jeremy, I didn't. I knew at this point I was going to be coming back, coming one weekend a month for the next year. So you're like, I did not tell him that oh. until the second date, and yeah. then I was kind of like, "I'd actually like to see you." I might be back again. <laughs> I'm coming back every month. So his personality overcame the situation. Oh, 100 percent. I mean, that, that's a fun story. But I mean, I fell fast. I, I mean. It was, Why? it was very, very, very soon I knew he was unlike anyone I had ever met mm. in many ways. I mean, his, his incredible I mean, good super, looks. In, he's super intelligent. That's what, that's what turned. At this and point, you was the, like, he, got he the, is so handsome. You got the flat time. top and, right and now. And we really, right? we, we wrote, we wrote emails back and forth. I mean, I would go, I would go in in the morning and there'd be an email from him and I would write him back. And we actually have all those emails and it's, they're super sweet. Oh, that's sweet. fun. It actually yeah. is super, super And great. super fun for us because like I was 27. And he's a and, fantastic and we, writer. We kind of racing around all over the country doing our own editors things. And I think both of us had, I mean, if we if we had ten more hours, we had both kind of been through these individual processes where we were kind of like, eh, we had we had uh, dated a lot of other people um, that that had kind of like, for various reasons, we we finally each on our own, ultimately made a commitment like, hey, I'm not actually gonna, I'm 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 not going down this path. And then and we kind of both, I mean, the prophet talked about letting God prevail in your life a year ago and just using that term that's become so in, such an enduring. And in our own way, we had both made individual decisions like, okay, so I'm not going down this road. I'm actually just going to say, I'm just going to trust Heavenly Father and let God prevail. And for me, when I consciously made that decision to just like, okay, just relax. Like, let's remove ourselves from things that... You know, whatever, and 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 not those words, but I'm just gonna trust Heavenly Father. I'm gonna jump full in on this deal, and just it's gonna be okay. And maybe, you know, maybe marriage is not in the cards for me right now. Maybe there's other important things in my life, but I'm okay with it. And it was within weeks, actually, with of that decision for me that we had our first conversation. And and then it was, it was just, it was a miracle. It was a miracle she would even talk to me in the first place. <laughs> but I think on a on a you, you can't put Heavenly Father in a box, right? I was living in New York City and there was a time when I was like, okay, this is it. These are the these are this is my these are the options that I have or whatever however you can frame it. And I just think I was supposed to meet Mark and he was in Indianapolis and how that all came to be is pretty special and for our, in our little world and our life story, it feels really really special that we found each other but i do think with young people i just think i i just think you should go and mm. wholeheartedly live your life and be brave and 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 not cloister you know just like mm-hmm. go and do and let heavenly father work some magic in your life i that's that I, I got whatever term you want to use but i just think for for mark and i we we both made these decisions and 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 for us you know mark was right around the corner and yeah, great. and it's a tangent for me, but like, but you know, when I met Leanna, it was so awesome for me because I'm like, she doesn't have any time for me. <laughs> like, it was awesome actually. I was like, she is racing ahead with life, and I got to see if I can just get her attention for two seconds. It's a little hard to get her. It was actually awesome. Yeah, it was. It was. We were really blessed that way. I, 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 I when you said what, I mean, there was just so many things about Mark that. Um, I mean, I just, I just felt, I just felt hard. I mean, he is the, he is the greatest part of my life, <clears throat> and that we got to, that we found each other, and there were a lot of, a lot of really tender moments when we, when we came yeah. into each other's lives. Yeah, made yeah. a lot of sense. You're both super busy and doing important things. When, so when do you kind of quit Letterman and team up? Yeah, so Mark and I, I mean, we, we got married and we, we made the decision. I mean, my whole life was around basketball season, so it was not even new or complicated. Sometimes I talk to these <laughs> you young know girls the and they're like, what do you mean we have to get married? And I'm like, well, I want to get married in August. It's either before the season or after the season. <laughs> and I want all of my dad's coaching friends to be there because my dad had passed. and It was super important to me. And recruiting ended in August. I mean, so we got married August 27th. There was literally a window of time. And I was like, that's when we're getting married. And it was like done. So we got married and then and – then, um, 
played that first season in Indianapolis. We got hired and fired, and we were in and the Leanne, CBA. Leanne and Leanne had left New York. She was in Indianapolis, but she she had taken a job to be really Dave's mom's personal assistant, the liaison mm. between and Dave that, and his mom, who was super active. Well, what happened is is I took over the philanthropic side yeah. of full time. Yeah. You because, can still yes, stay connected yes, there yes. and be in Indiana. That was one. Of, okay. I mean, he he was. I think trust is an important part of that world, and and so that there was this opportunity for me to continue doing that. Yep. And Dave's wife, Dave's Dave's mom, excuse me, was a local celebrity, and so I managed that. I didn't yep. really work for her right. per se, but I managed her business affairs. He was very protective of his mother, and so I kind of oversaw that. But it was quick. I mean, we got we were in this NBA, the CBA, and then we were overseas by Christmas. We were in Istanbul, Turkey. You were in Turkey yeah, playing yeah. full Uker. And it was awesome. What a I fun way to start. I didn't realize you uh, went to Turkey. Yeah, yeah, for half a season. It was awesome. So we, got fired. we got married. She married an NBA player. And then a month later, I got fired, and she was married to a player in Turkey. I married Mark Edwards. <laughs> I married Mark Edwards. You're like, uh, Wells Fargo looking a little different here. <laughs> that's exactly right. That's, that's, that's hilarious. Well, listen, there are a million things I still want to talk to you about. So we're going to call this part one. Right, let's go. We're going to call this part one. Okay, Leanne and Mark, thank you. Okay, that'll do it for us. Listen to previous episodes on the BYU Radio app where a podcast is found. If you're listening to this in the future, we'll have multi-part with Mark and Leanne Pope. We're Tanner Graff and producer Trent Rhymeshusel. I'm Jerem Jordan. We just listened to Deep Blue on BYU Radio.